pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Attorney White will be approximately a half hour to 45 minutes late this evening. And the first up we have is uh, the 2017 2018 uh, budget presentation by our treasurer, uh, Christine uh, Lisak. Good evening, everyone. Thank you that all of you attended this evening to view this presentation. The 2017 18 fiscal budget for the village of Webster. We'll be talking about the sewer fund, the general fund, and the parks and recreation fund. And an update as to where we are at this point in time as far as the funds go with that fund. The budget process began in January. We compared year-to-year -year actual figures. We looked at the current budget status and where we were and how much we were spending in each line. We looked at what the economic trends are and what things might be going up in price over the coming year. We knew certain items wouldn't change and we knew that those items would stay the same. We gathered estimates from our department heads and we had many workshop meetings. The sewer fund, newly established almost a year ago. Was that Jake in that picture? No. <coughs> the sewer people. Our rate will continue to be $98 as it was this current year. Base rate will be $24.50 for our commercial and resident or our commercial and industrial users. We estimate revenues to be for the sewer $631,000. Dump fees to be $212,364 with a total budget appropriation of $843,364. Estimated revenues for the sewer fund, as I just mentioned, total that will be taken in will be $843,364. 75% of that are sewer charges at $631,000, which are comprised of commercial billing, sewer fees on tax bills, and these um, commercial billings also include Xerox. STP dump fees are 18% of this budget, which reflects about $152,000. And it also reflects a um, half a cent increase in dump fee charges from three and a half cents to four cents a gallon. Finally, 7% of the budget is comprised of sewer rents, which are fees charged to developers for connecting to our sewer. More specifically, this is for Brittany Woods connection fees. 67 units are estimated to be going up there at a cost of $900 per unit to garner $60,300. Our budget appropriations for the coming fiscal year are estimated to be exactly what we take in, hopefully, at $843,364. Largest portion of that pie is 67% for the home and community service section, which are STP operations. Our second section, 12% are employee benefits at 12%, which includes medical insurance, among other things, as well as New York State Insurance Fund funding. Thirdly, at 8% is debt service. The sewer fund took over the debt uh, for the SDP reconstruction at 455000 the grit system for 590000 and the sewer outfall for 300000 for a total debt to be financed of $1.3 million. This was originally part of the general fund. So this piece comprises $65,550. Thirdly, 7% for general government support. The village office charges, payroll, administrative charges at $56,133. And 6% is for transfers. We anticipate funding reserves for repair and equipment um, charges, $54,196. General fund. As you know, the past, this past year, we or the current fiscal year, we set aside two hundred fifty thousand dollars to buy more equipment, and buy we did. This beautiful dump truck is now ours. We just paid for it. 
<laughs> didn't come on yeah. today, it's but here. it's there. And it's good looking too. We also purchased a truck, F-350. It's a fine looking vehicle. And a flatbed. And we are leasing a backhoe, which was very useful after the windstorm, right? So the general fund. Backhoe, Jay? What's that? Yeah. The general fund for this 2017 18 budget, our tax rate will stay the same at $2.13 a thousand. Estimated revenues are anticipated to be $2,614,913. We do not anticipate appropriating any fund balance to cover the, any shortfalls because there will be no shortfalls. So therefore, budget appropriations will be the same as revenues at $2,614,913. Estimated revenues are comprised as follows. The largest piece of our pie comes from county sales tax anticipated income to be $1,334,000. Our second piece is property taxes at $539,176, which is 21% of our pie. Other charges, other taxes, village fees and income at $339,732, which includes cable TV franchise fees, gross utility taxes, passport fees, building permits and mortgage taxes, among other things, of course. Uh, state sources comprise 10% of the budget, $265,133. Cell tower income is $75,840,000 at 3% and payments in lieu of taxes at $60,891. <coughs> Our budget appropriations, the largest piece of this pie is transportation or DPW at a million dollars, $1,500,000. $5,584, 39% of the pie. Second piece is employee benefits, which include New York State retirement funding as well as medical insurance. Thirdly, government, general governmental support at $483,000, which includes the office, upkeep of the office, trustee payroll, insurances, workers' comp, umbrella coverage, and the attorney's fee. Home and community services include zoning, planning, storm, water, expenses, $159,000. Interfund transfers come in at $138,855, 5% of our pie, which include funding of reserves, of which we plan on funding six. North Avenue Connector Project, $10,800. Equipment rotation at $50,000. New York State Retirement, Donovan Street, Commercial Street revitalization, 10000 a piece at this time, and we have established a well decommissioning reserve fund for $48,056. Debt service is at $121,831, funding of a street sweeper and milling and paving of some streets that we did several years ago. And public safety comes in at $56,000 and culture and recreational activities at $32,000. Projects that the DPW plans on working on this year include Dunning and Corning paving, preventive road maintenance, rotating road service maintenance, which will lower future maintenance costs. And we continue to fund the equipment replacement program and hope to purchase another dump truck, a flatbed, and a pickup truck. Finally, our Parks and Recreation Trust Fund. As you know, this is new construction, which was approved after April 26, 2007. $1,000 per unit is paid by the developer for this fee once the C have always been issued. <coughs> to date, we've collected $123,825 in fees, $180 in interest, and we've spent $64,145. Currently, the park and rec account balance is $59,860. There's no budget necessary for this fund, and it can be used to purchase equipment and land for the parks. And that's all I have to present this evening. Does anyone have any questions? Well done. Thank you. I just had a uh, question on the cable TV franchise. You're showing um, a jump from 45 to 65. Could you just provide some details on that, please? Certainly. In 
in the 2016 fiscal year, we um, collected $65,000. And in the current fiscal year, we've already collected $50,000, and we anticipate receiving another payment in May. So that will most likely, because each payment is typically $16,000, they'll bring us well over $65,000 for the current year. So I budgeted forward about the same amount that we've received in the past. Okay. Um, <coughs> vehicles. Vehicles. This, this is you, yes. Sir Jay. Yes. So after we buy these three vehicles, what are we looking at for next year? Um, I know at some point the uh, back on is going to have to get into the mix um, for a replacement vehicle or replacement plan for that or at least uh, option on that. Um, that would be the sewer though, right? Not yes. That would be the sewer, but that's you know one of them. Um, it's going to effectively replace all of our, you know, our, our two pickup trucks or two flatbeds. Um, and then we have, we're going to have one more dump truck that's going to have to get in the rotation. And what we're thinking about ultimately having is two six-wheelers, you know, full-size six-wheelers and two of the smaller ones, like we got the 750 like we got this year. Um, it was really, uh, we, we got it the day before the windstorm, and so we were able to use it with that snowstorm, and it performed great. Um, the guys were real happy with it and did everything the bigger truck could do, but it ran Obviously less expensively, so and it was forty grand cheaper. So Good. Um, that's that's the plan right now. So keep working on those dump trucks and then sidewalk plow. Yep. And that's that's a biggie. Um, obviously that piece of equipment. We're testing different things right. now. I think we found a pretty, pretty decent one that I need for. Oh really? Yeah, there's a little oh, wide. It's four foot wide. It's a mini articulating loader, a whacker. Um, and with a snow blower on the front, they took it down last week to where we have snow stockpiled from falling snow on Main Street, and it kind of melted and went through, so it was pretty hard back. And said the thing was throwing snow 100 feet. So, really? Yeah, we can put it in the backyards now. Nice. Great. Throw it right back at the state truck. <laughs> 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 go by, right? But it really performed well. It's one that we went over and saw it on uh, Ronnie Boyd. has three of them. We saw over at the Rhino Boy. They have three of those and some tracklesses. Nice. Um, and they're just a little more than half the cost of the trackless. Really? Yeah. So, yeah. So, so I'll we'll tell you what, it's nice to see the new vehicles yeah. in. Um, and nice to know that there will be more coming in next year. So, yeah. hopefully, that's sorely needed. And, uh, what's that? Oh, well, hopefully, it goes a little smoother than the last one. Yeah. Well, yeah. That was, uh, it was, a, it was a learning. Learning lesson, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think everybody learned a little bit on that, but it's nice to see it. And the timing that it did arrive, albeit late, um, couldn't have been better, like you said. Put it right to use. Um, I just want to thank everybody, um, board members included, um, for all the hard work that went into putting this budget together. I mean, a lot of uh, a lot of great questions were asked. Um, I mean, there, there may be a, a couple more tweaks here and there, um, but um, it, it's nice to see that we're able to keep the tax rate at its current level, which is uh, nine, nine cents lower than it had been for years. Um, and uh, you know, I'm happy that we established a number of reserve accounts that um, will be available to continue to fund going forward. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm quite pleased with all the work that everyone has done, and I, I really appreciate it. Thank everyone for all their diligence and, and efforts in this, putting this together. And Christina, thank you very much for your, your presentation this evening also. Sure. Anyone else have any questions? Okay, well it is now uh, approximately 7.44, so we will have one more minute, and we will um, open up the public hearing, but uh, we have to wait till 7.45, so. Thanks, Trusty Bell Kane. <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.
All right, I have 745, so at this time well, I will open up the public hearing on the budget. If anyone would like to uh, speak, please uh, step forward. Richard Walter, 20 Elm Street. I just want to make one major, or two major points on the budget. One is the wage increase that you've all voted yourselves uh, as we are a village now with only two major sections, DPW and sewer, where before we were a village with three major sections, including a water department. Your responsibilities went down tremendously three and a half years ago when you did away, or a little over three and a half years ago when you did away with the water department. I don't feel that a 3% raise in at this time justified, as you are now doing a lot less, have less responsibilities. The water department was a responsibility for the health and well-being of all the people in the village of Webster. One major follow-up could have made a lot of people sick, and that's now gone. You no longer have that responsibility. And also, I'd like to say, along with the person that put an article in today's Herald, uh, People in the village here are in a, many of them are on a fixed income and got three tenths of a percent. You're asking for three percent. I realize that three percent is not a lot of money, but the general principle of the matter is you want to be rewarded for last year raising us our tax, not our taxes, but a sore fee, which amounted to some people well over 40 percent increase in the bill they get from the village every year. And for billing people 40% more, I don't think that justifies a raise. If anything, you should be ashamed of yourself for asking for that much in one year and take a cut and pay. Thank you. What you neglected to state is how we declined it uh, all four years of being on the, or three years previous to this on the board. I still have And that in 2005, um, which is 12 years ago, Yep. They were making more than we do sitting yes. in this floor today. So I just want the record yeah, to reflect the Declining it still puts it on the books and leaves it there. So the next person to take the seat, instead of getting a 3% raise, now steps in at a 3, 6, 9, 12% raise as it multiplies over the years. If we keep putting raises in that we don't take, all of a sudden somebody's stepping into the job at a much higher raise rate than the last person does. So I do I respect, really I respect your opinion, but I also like the record stand that this board has also declined it several years in a row. So that's an important fact that we should leave out. I just want to piggyback on that. I addressed this last year also, Jerry, thank you for your comments. Uh, Mr. Walters, thank you for your comments also. Um, that if you base just on the rate of inflation, uh, salaries for the trustees and the mayor, um, the mayor's salary would be 18000 and obviously the um, rate of inflation has been less than 3% for a number of years. Um, According to the Social Security have, Administration, uh, it was 3 tenths of a percent. Mr. Walters, thank you very much. Um, and, 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 and I also commend this board on, uh, on the due diligence of establishing a sewage rental fee, in my opinion, which should have been um, established uh, decades ago. And by establishing this sewage rental fee, which I believe um, is the lowest sewage rental fee in, the, in, in Monroe County, it has afforded the village of Webster um, to implement a uh, vehicle rotation plan, establish numerous uh, reserve accounts that were in need of, of uh, being established for a number of years. Uh, I think that we put the village on a, uh, a fiscal path of uh, responsible uh, budgeting um, and I think this board is to be commended for that. And one, all, one additional thing that doesn't get a lot of notori notoriety um, is the fact that uh, this village board um, actually lowered the tax rate um, from $2.22 to $2.13. And uh, it, was, it was with, um, you know, with difficulty that we did that. We didn't take that lightly, that decision to implement the sewage remedy, but it was something that needed to be done. And um, I think that we put, put this village um, in the right direction fiscally as a result of that. So thank you for your comments. Appreciate it. Anyone else?
there is no one else that seems to speak during the public hearing, um, I will close the public hearing at this point and we will move into <coughs> the comments. So if anyone would like to speak. It's me again. Good evening. Who are you? Uh, I want to refer to uh, the article, front page article that Mr. Cahill put in the paper. Uh, has your byline, so I assume you wrote this, and though it does sound like very much like somebody else. Uh, about the budget. First of all, first thing I highlighted here was it says significant open meetings. All the budget meetings that I was here for were in executive, or not executive, the session were in a workshop, which although they're open for the public to sit here, they're not open for the public to comment in. So significant open meetings, I don't know where they were. They were not open to the public for comment, only to the public to sit and listen to. Uh, the fact that you established some res new reserve accounts here for Donovan Street, Commercial Street, that's good, but I don't think we can wait until they're fully funded because we'll be back to dirt roads and you, at the rate you're putting money away, that there's enough money there to rebuild the streets that they need. So I would hope that we find some other way to fund them before we wait another five, six years at the rate you're funding them now to <coughs> complete. And the major point in here is a well capping reserve fund. When the water was switched, we were indicated it would not cost anything to switch. Well, I guess it didn't cost anything to switch because the county turned the valves. Now we're just putting, I think you quoted tonight, uh, the treasurer quoted tonight, $48,000 away to do this at that rate, just the closing down of the wells, their estimates, and that's only the wells at the well field, not the ones that are offsite. The last estimate I heard was about $700,000, which does not include the removal of asbestos from the buildings up there. So at the rate you're finding it now, 15, 20 years with inflation, we might finish paying off the cost of switching to water. Uh, and again, on the lowering of the tax rate down to, from 222 to 213, I will come right back to the same thing. Uh, as I just said before, you did lower the tax rate, a minuscule lowering of the rate, and a major increase with the sewer <coughs> rate. The net effect is many people, including myself, are paying well over 40% more to the village. Whether you call it a fee or a tax, it still comes out of our pockets. So, fee or tax are the same. And again, as you are doing more, the last line in the, your article in the paper says you're doing more with less. Well, if you take that $48 or that $98 fee, that over 40% increase, I would say you're doing maybe doing more but you've got a lot more to do it with. And it all came out of village taxpayers' pockets. Thank you. Yeah, just to clarify the last sentence, I was referring to the, um, the state funding that we haven't seen significant increases in that. So that's what that state was referring to. So. Thank you, Mr. Walter. Appreciate it. Anyone else this evening? No? OK. So I'll close down the public uh, comment section. We'll move right into board of business. Okay, first up is uh, minutes. So first one up is uh, Village Board Workshop for the uh, March 22nd, 2017. This was uh, obviously a, uh, a budget meeting. Tentative preliminary budget will be updated and presented to the village board at the meeting on March 23rd, 2017. Um, that's quite a review, by the way. Yeah, that was it. That was it. <laughs> Convention.
mentioned all were present with the exception of Trustee <laughs> Trustee <laughs> <Trusty> and Toledo. However, sorry. I would have rather been here than what I went through that day. Probably, yes, yeah, yes, probably. yes. That was a motion. All right, I will entertain the motion in a second to uh, accept the minutes as, uh, as presented. I will make that motion. I'll second. Trustee Lansing? Aye. Trustee Bill Payne? Aye. Trustee Byers? Aye. Trustee Polito? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say yes. All right. <laughs> Mayor Cato? Aye. Motion passes. All right, next is the meeting minutes for March 23rd meeting. Um, one addition I would like to see included in these minutes were that were left out were the comments that Trustee Byers made with respect to the, the flyer from the Webster Citizens Action League, um, and then my response to um, Trustee Byers. Um, comments regarding that flyer. I would like to see those included in the minutes. And that's the only input I had regarding these minutes. Do you have any issues with anything else? I did review the tape and it was a, uh, I felt it was a significant discussion and I'd like to include it in the minutes. Anybody else have anything? entertain a motion and a second to accept these minutes uh, with the provision that the comments made by Trustee Byers and myself um, on the tape are included um, in the minutes. I'll make that motion. Next we have the Village Board Workshop of March 28th. Uh, Trustee Byers, would you give us the honor, please? Hey, we opened this up at 7 o'clock, and absent were, oh, Trustee oh. Ippolito, <gasps> and Trustee <laughs> Belkane. <laughs> uh, motion uh, by Trustee Byers, seconded by Trustee Lansing, to enter into an executive session at 7-11 to discuss the CSEA union contract negotiations with Jennifer Reese, CSEA Labor Relations Specialist John Carnival, Chief Waste Treatment Plant Operator James Scott, Senior Motor Equipment Operator Jake, uh, Jake Swingley, Superintendent of Public Works, all in favor and carried. Motion by Trustee Lancey, seconded by Trustee Byers to exit, exit executive session at 11.01 p.m. How are you guys missed that? We had, we had All were in, in favor of <coughs> Jerry. Thank you. Fine, fine of you, sir. Thank you. I've uh, got one correction. That was Dan Bortle. Yeah, it was that Dan. Was was yeah. They're frequently confused. I can't As opposed to James Scott? Yeah. yeah. I need to mix those two up. Yeah. All right, was that the end of the correction? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, so I entertain a motion a second um, to accept the minutes with the adjustment, um, which Josette has made notation to. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. I can't remember if it's L-E or E-L. I think it's L-E. L-E. 
All right, moving along, we have a resolution to approve the claims and warrants. Uh, I reviewed the bills. I had my questions answered. Did you uh, ask about the tolling? Yep. Okay. What was that? The first it was ended up being a transmission. What was it <coughs> first again, Jake? It was a, a W7, their older, oldest dump drop was an intermittent transmission issue. It's got a push button automatic transmission. Um, but that, when it went to dump at high acres, it would not dump. That was one, if you recall, the box fell off. Came off of. Hence vehicle yeah. rotation. Yes. <laughs> We got the box back on relatively quick and on. It was tested. When it went down, we don't know if there was, I forgot if there was air in the liner. I think it was an adjustment on the hydraulic motor or the hydraulic pump for it. It was necessary. Um, but it wouldn't dump when it was full. We took it down there on the way almost to Lakeville. It, it is when it started, the transmission uh, issues reared their head again. Um, so we got to Lakeville and ended up having to have it towed. I'll back up to get, take care of the transmission issues, and then they were squared away, and we got the uh, material dumped and everything. So. Any other questions? All right. I'll entertain a motion and a second to pay the bill. Then. I'll make a motion. I'll no second. Trustee Belkane. Aye. Trustee Byers. Aye. Trustee Abolito. Aye. All right, next is authorization for Jake Swingley and uh, Jim Clancy to attend the 2017 Highway School uh, to sponsor by the Cornell Local Roads Program in Ithaca. Um, and it's at a cost not to exceed $964. Um, Jake, I, I know that you sent out the, uh, the email and descriptions earlier and requested questions or whatever. And, um, <coughs> so we'll give everyone another opportunity to, uh, to ask questions at this time if they haven't. And, and to clarify too, I think at this point I'm going to withdraw the request for myself to go to this. You know, looking at the budget and thinking about what we have for some of these opportunities. Um, Nikon usually is some very good information um, as well, and that's usually in October. So I thought if, if Jim could go to this one, I would look at going to the Nikon one in October. Where, where is the one in October? Hawaii. I was just going to say. <laughs> Saratoga. <laughs> no, I think this year, I think it's in Lake George this year. Yeah, so, Saratoga, Lake George. Yeah, somewhere in that area. Um, last year we went, it was in Geneva, which is really nice because, well, nice and not nice. You had to drive back and forth every day, but it was nice because we didn't have to stay and have that expense. So. Um, but, you know, so that takes the cost down to what it has to be. Yeah. Yeah, with the hotel and the. Uh, it's 110 for the. Uh, for the. 124 for each It's just under 500 total, and so maybe not to exceed $700 should give us a good 
good uh, good number on that. You said around five hundred, so not to exceed seven. It was five for just the class in the hotel alone. So for the other incidentals, there's three days of the three days of dinner. Okay. It should be about another hundred and twenty. Mm -hmm. Are you taking the, the uh, Equinox? Hopefully, one part of the vehicle rotation plan, if you recall, too, is get rid of that little S10 pickup, steel wheels, the one the building department's pick up from him, and then put wheels in that uh, Equinox. So if we can do away without the Equinox for a few days, if we'll can drive the uh, truck, that would be great. <coughs> we get down to that point where he's going to, you know, plus it's available if anybody else uses it, but that's, that's the plan. Yeah. He would like to have an electric vehicle, which I'm sure we'll be working towards at some point. Look at any cost, uh, stay outside of uh, Ithaca. Yeah, there's, there's a cow. What's that? I had a hotel or outside of Ithaca driving in if he's got the Equinox. We've done that. I think my first year I went down to that. I Joe did up, that. Yeah, up near the airport. And it was, I think it was still a little more. I think it was like the 124, I believe, the hotel. Which is pretty, it's pretty inexpensive in the grand scheme of things nowadays, I guess. But I stayed in one right near the airport. It was maybe more than that. All right. So, uh, you gotta go? No. Please are coming. She's okay. That's what I was being concerned. Sorry about that. Yeah. Where are we? Um, so I'll take a motion. We're about ready to have a motion for $700. Maximum, not to exceed. Okay. So, I'll ask for a motion. Uh, the and uh, Jim Clancy to the uh, highway school uh, for a cost not to exceed $700. I'll second it. Okay. Trustee Byer? Aye. Mayor Cahill? Aye. to pay Blue Engineers the invoice of uh, $2,260 for professional, for professional services rendered um, in February for the North Avenue Connected Project. It's paid out of the North Avenue Connected Project Reserve Account.
All right. <clears throat> Next, we have authorization uh, for Verizon to provide cell phone service to the village of Webster. All of Joe's emails, I thought she really wanted to go to the TNT. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I got that. Now, that wait a second. I didn't get that impression. <laughs> she told me to say. <laughs> well, I, I, I appreciate the research that she did on this, and um, you know. I think the numbers speak for themselves, yeah. along with the fact that the AT&T rep still hasn't even contacted her. So um, that goes along the lines of uh, you know, customer, <coughs> customer service and, and response. So, um, unless anyone has any objections, um, um, I would, I would uh, entertain a motion a second to, uh, to authorize uh, Verizon through um, Deputy Clerk Joe O'Neill uh, to provide our, our, our cell phone services to us going forward. I'll make that motion. I just had a quick question on this, and I don't think I've seen this portion of the board, but is this unlimited like messages and, and data usage? I thought. That was one of the questions we did ask. But it's tiered as far as minutes. Yeah, you can use if you're over and someone isn't. It's a shared you, yeah, pool, it's a shared yeah, pool. Of minutes. And we might have a problem the first month or two until we start to you know, build that pool of minutes, but I, it, from what it looks like, each phone gets 200 minutes, so you'll be getting 1,000 minutes. But remember, everyone, most people have Verizon anyways. So when you have a Verizon person, it's great. Oh, great. It doesn't take Verizon, away Verizon. Verizon. I, think it's just, I think sometimes it's, it's the data, and I, and I'm, I know we you know, getting emails and stuff yes. like that, especially if you're not in a Wi-Fi yeah. area. And that was a big concern for Joe, too, and she... I'm confident that she's gained the, 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 the best. Yeah, and this is over. She had data to support what you, on average, what you yeah. were doing, and this was over that. Yeah. Okay. So I think you should be. She went I past, she went, she utilized past usage. My, my son just got an iPhone not that long ago, and we got two notices from one month from AT&T saying, hey, your data's over, and we're going to charge you another 15 bucks for another gig, and then about... A week later, hey, your data is getting close again. And you're going to get another fifteen bucks for another game. It, went, it rolled into week number two. I'm surprised, Jake. <laughs> I think it was about a week and a half. And he blamed that on the power outage. Did he really? Yeah. Because he was he was wrong or something like that. No, he didn't have any Wi-Fi. Yeah. Well, I'll just tell him to walk down the berries. I told him that we have books that don't require Wi-Fi. <laughs> Pull one of them out. It didn't work, did it? So, so I made my try to Trustee Lancy. Hmm? Trustee Lancy? Yeah. Trustee Beltane? Aye. Trustee Byer? Aye. Mayor Cahill? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, next is the, the Arbor Day Foundation. Um, yes. So I'd like to read the letter that we received. Um, it says, Dear Tree City USA supporter, um, on behalf of the Arbor Day Foundation, I write to congratulate the Village of Webster on earning recognition as a 2016 Tree City USA. Residents of the Village of Webster should be proud to live in a community that makes the planting and care of trees a priority. Village of Webster is one of more than 3,400 Tree City USAs with a combined population of 140 million. The Tree USA program is sponsored by the Arbor Day Foundation in partnership with the U.S. Forest Service and the National Association of State Foresters. As a result of your commitment to effective urban forest management, you already know that trees are vital to the public infrastructure of cities and towns throughout the country providing numerous environmental, social, and economic benefits. In fact, trees are one piece of the community infrastructure that actually increases in value over time. We hope you are excited to share this accomplishment. In closing this packet is a press release for your convenience as you prepare to contact local media and the public. State foresters are responsible for the presentation of the Trees City USA flag and other materials. 
We will forward information about your awards to your state's forester's office to coordinate presentation. It would be especially appropriate to make a Tree USA award a part of your community's Arbor Day ceremony. Again, we celebrate your commitment to the people and trees of the village of Webster, uh, and thank you for helping to create a healthier planet for all of us. Um, and to this end, and in recognition of um, all the work and effort and background research and bringing this to the board's attention, setting up the Arbor Day planting of the trees out front, the planting of all 17 trees um, throughout the village uh, last summer. Um, I would like to give special recognition to our superintendent of the DPW, Mr. Jake Swingley, um, because without his efforts, uh, this would not have happened. So, Jake, this is just one more thing that you know I'm proud to say thank you um, for your efforts on this. Um, and uh, again, without without your efforts, this would not have happened. So, I greatly, greatly uh, appreciate what you have done uh, for the village of Webster with respect to uh, um, the Arbor Day and the recognition that we we have received. Because if it wasn't for you, we would not have received that. So, thank, thank you. you. And, and, and I think it you know goes back to the board too and their commitment when you're reviewing the budget it's very easy to know there's not a lot of visual gain from spending thousands of dollars every year and improving that for for tree trimming and things like that but that windstorm that we had really highlighted the value that we lost two of our village trees um, and we certainly had a lot of other ones to pick up but um, only two trees and all that because is the board continues to make commitments to spending that money and providing that, that funding that they do the true term and the, um, the, the uh, inventory that we just updated and things like that. So, and there's certainly a lot more than me and, uh, and all the guys in the back that, that go out yeah. and pick up the brush and, and help promote, you know, everybody in the village having trees on their own personal property too because you know, there's nowhere to get rid of the brush, nowhere to get rid of the leaves, nowhere to, you know, it's, it's, very tempting just to make one cut at the bottom of them. So. Thank you for your trip. Yeah. Welcome as well. Yes. Yeah. That was yeah. good. Left at what, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning? Well, 4, 4 30. <laughs> Thank you very much. You Appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, next is a resolution for uh, Mayor Cale to sign the Verizon wireless document regarding the uh, 1075 uh, South Avenue. This is regarding the uh, cell tower. <coughs> Any questions? All right, I'll entertain a motion a second to authorize the mayor to sign. Yeah. I'll make that motion. Trustee Byer? Aye. Trustee Lampe? Aye. Trustee Belkane? Aye. Trustee Apolito? Aye. Mayor Cahill? Aye. As soon as we're done here, Joe, I'll sign that and then you can just notarize it. Um, next up is our attorney who is not present. So we will move along to uh, the confident overtime report. Or this, uh, inclusive of the uh, wind storm. Yeah, yeah, include, yeah, included the wind and the snowstorm. Yeah. I mean, these, I can't say enough about the guys that uh, you know working in the back and some of the hours that they put in. I mean, everybody's like, oh yeah, you're getting all this overtime. It's still reports in the 20 hours sometimes they were here. Yeah. Um, trying to keep up and keep everything safe. I don't even think it's that crazy with. The amount of fish. Yeah. 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 It's not like they were sitting yeah. in the back room eating pizza. And, you know. oh, well, we got a pizza a couple of times. <laughs> they did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> they did. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Actually, the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> yep. No, they absolutely. But they, uh, yeah, they were. It's, I know Kevin, Kevin came up to his shift down at the sewage treatment plant and then coming up, came up here and pushed the white stuff around and was here for quite a while and covering. 
turn. So it was like side, you were on the sidewalk plow there, uh, the track was there, weren't you? Yeah, I got called in Florida for, hey, can you get back? Can you come right in? <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. No, I tell you, it was, a, it was once again, it was a, it was a heck of a team effort, and uh, you know, I, I've said it before, I'll continue to say it, and I brag about it all the time. You know, we got a heck of a team of guys here, we really do, and I've said it, and I'll continue to say, it. I'll put them up against any, any, any municipality out there. Um, so, you know, I think we're very, very fortunate. We're really very fortunate to have, you know, as many you know, hardworking, committed um, uh, people that we have in our. In our System. So, thanks, thanks for all, all, all the gentlemen for all their hard work and commitment for the, you know during that, uh, that snowstorm and the windstorm also. And the residents greatly appreciated the fact that um, not only did we pick up the branches, we, you know, we went out with the loader and we picked up the, you know, the, the, the cut up logs and stuff, which um, obviously we don't do on a regular basis, but in this situation we did, and um, I, I'm just, you know. Even people on my street were very appreciative of the fact that we did that. Um, and they know it's not a normal course of business for us to do that. But the special circumstances, um, the, village, um, uh, the village stepped up to, to help our residents. And uh, it, it did not go unnoticed, let's just put it that way. So next we have uh, budget modifications. Of which there are two. The first of which is for three thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. Currently, the equipment line, this amount would be too too small of an amount to go into the equipment line. So it's coming from the equipment line and going to pump station maintenance. For some reason, CPE didn't bill properly. So we just received late two thousand sixteen a bill for two thousand and fifteen. What? Yes. There was a PO set up for it. I'm not going to call a vendor and ask for a bill. Yeah. Um, right. And I didn't. But they didn't forget about it until two years later. So consequently, the money was put back into fund balance because yeah. right. we just didn't think that was, anything was going to happen of it. Well, consequently, it is a general fund expense. So therefore, 3750 is going from the sewer equipment line in the general fund to the pump station maintenance line in the general fund. And the second one is for $5,361. Currently, the sewer treatment equipment line has that money to be transferred into the sanitary sewer system equipment line to allow for the purchase of a sewer lateral line camera, which has already been purchased. Yeah, that was a replacement school. The thing went out about 83 feet, I believe. Yeah, this one goes up to, what, 200? I was looking at the bill. That wasn't the problem. It broke the fiber optic. Yeah. Twisted. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm talking about the length that goes down to like 200 yeah, feet to what I read on that uh, invoice. It was about the same as I brought to your house. That's, that one time. Is that 200 feet? We didn't take it all the way out. Uh, yeah, How did it break? How did the fiber optics break? When you push it, it sometimes hits curls and 45s and. Yeah. Just time and time bending and bending and bending and yeah, I was I was I was surprised how expensive that stuff is. I looked at all the other expenses on there related to the camera, I'm like holy smokes. But in return, you saved the village taxpayers a lot of money by not having them take private companies and camera the same line for three hundred dollars well, a pump. Listen, I, I I'm not I'm not criticizing. I'm just no, saying, I'm just saying. That I was amazed at how expensive that stuff. It is. Also, the camera service is phenomenal. I've used it at least what, twice that I know of. Mm -hmm. It works fantastic. And, then, and, and, and you're right. You say that the little taxpayers a lot of money because if they were to hire a, a private company, it's a great point you make. Mm -hmm. it, it'd be extremely expensive to have them go down there. So that's just another service that you know people don't realize that we uh, we provide until the time comes where their sewer lines back up and they need to know why. Um, and then you can call Chamberlain and they'll come down and they'll, they'll clean it out. Or you can rent a great big snake like I did on a couple of occasions and, and run that down. But. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions? Is that uh, that one was covered here in the uh, okay. bill, the 5,351? Um, I saw it on the line here. Then, yeah. Yes, yeah. that's From exactly Cook what Iron or whatever. Yes. So we approve that. Yeah. Goodbye.
right away with that purchase, you do get an ad. Yeah. How about gloves? Oh, gloves, just a little bit. I would pay for gloves. All right, so I'll make a motion and a, and a second. Um, entertain a motion and a second to make these budget modifications as delineated by our charter. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Trustee Belkane? Aye. Trustee Lansing? Aye. Trustee Polito? Aye. Trustee Byer? Aye. Mayor Cahill? Aye. Yeah. Motion passes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jake, do you have nothing this evening? That's <laughs> oh, <laughs> kind of a meeting question. Yeah, right. There the, you um, go. I did hear back from the town of Shelby uh, in regards to the offer that the village made for their 2016 Mac um, truck. And if you recall that we were looking at that, so we went out and viewed the truck. An offer of 140,000, um, which was rejected, unfortunately, uh, by the town. They said they, you know, they couldn't lose that much. I did have the opportunity to talk to the supervisor today. Her and the town, they called me back or called me up, and I think, I think we'll be looking in another direction. I think what they, their appetite, uh, there seems to be some contention about this truck in the get-go, um, and I think that. At least from what I got in, in, in that regard was, you know, they're aiming at 170 or above, and I think at that at that cost, uh, which I completely understand from their standpoint, um, but at that cost, we might as well look at one right. that's already the right color and everyone else. Yeah, they don't have to pay. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, so I, I don't think there's the opportunity for savings there. Like yeah. we, it's we, a good we, effort, though. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. A, it's a beautiful. Pass, you don't get the sale, as they say. So. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful sure. truck, and I think it would have worked well with yeah. slight modifications, but. I, I think at that time, at yeah. that point, I'm assuming that, I said I certainly couldn't speak for the board, but I'm assuming uh, that it would be probably right if I replied that the 170000 would not be uh, an acceptable. Right. Okay. Great. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Two. What? <laughs> what? That's very nice. That's <coughs> what, John? And then um, also just. Monday, um, we met last week with the contractor who's doing the sidewalks on Kittleburger Park. <coughs> and Monday, uh, they, we recall this community development block grant, um, the largest ever that the village received. I got to throw that in for Will. Um, but uh, we, we met with the contractor, and we were hoping to get that in the last fall, but we didn't get the contract until right. November. I met with them before starting Monday. So they should be holding me some notifications and neighbors and things like that. And met down there, been parking things out. So we're going, uh, the south side of the road has sidewalks the whole length. We're going five footers. We're extending about 25 foot past on both sides and creating a crosswalk down there, uh, kind of close to where the circle is. Um, and then if we can, uh, we've been talking to community development block grant folks um, with the county. If they, if, if they can find any additional funding, like before Monday. Um, we're going to uh, be looking at adding that side, um, this the north side of the road. There's a short section about 270 feet. Uh, we're we'll looking at adding that um, as well, making those five footers. And you know, when Morgan does what he's doing down at the other end, perhaps someday we can look, right? we can look at uh, putting them all together. Yeah. Um, it might work really good there. I know there's a few spots there with some. A couple houses in particular with some water issues, um, water running down their driveways into their backyard, into their front yard, the curbs uh, missing in one spot. Um, <coughs> and uh, they said when they was, those houses, their houses were from the 18, 1800s, mm -hmm. um, they used to come out to a step and then have another step, and then that would go down to the road. Well, now the road's this much higher than the first step where they come out. Um, so over time, I, they must have just keep whenever they rain paved, they forgot the milling part in front of it or the removal. So it seems like the road's about 18 inches from his description, about 18 inches higher than it was from when the house was built. So um, if, if we could look at doing the sidewalks in that part, it might provide a nice little dual purpose, you know, yeah, nice safe trail and the 
and the name's Dan McCratchy, I'm a bit to carry everything the other way, so. Hey, what's, what's our involvement in that? I mean, do, do we provide any vehicles or equipment? In this, in the sidewalk replacement? Um, no, we, we're doing a remove and replace, and they're uh, doing the restoration. I mean, they're doing everything. It's re remove, replace, and restore. Okay, so um, we, don't do, we, don't like, we don't provide anything? No, if we will, if, if there's things, because there are always things will pop up, so we'll be available. Okay. Um, you know, there's one area where we're going to put drainage in and work with them and get drainage in from before we put the new crosswalk in. Right. Because there's a wet spot down at the end of Kittleburg. If we don't put that drainage, we're going to put a French drain and bring it over to the, where that creek is. Uh, if we don't have that in there, it's just going to create a dam and I think make that situation worse. worse. So we're going to work with them on that. If there's issues with the driveways, uh, we have a pretty narrow tree lawn area and the aprons are pretty narrow. We're trying to just keep it to whatever is kind of included into the price. But it gets to where we start pulling up some asphalt and more of it's popping up where it's obvious that that's the best way to do it. Maybe we're going to end up with flopping and grabbing some of those driveway aprons so we don't, we can limit the cost to or limit any overages. But yeah, they, uh, they, they plan on taking about three days, they said, three and a half days, and have them, they'll start pulling on one end and just keep rolling down. They're pouring one day, still pulling further ahead and forming them and mm -hmm. keep moving. They did Baker Street um, mm -hmm. or, uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah. 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 Well, that's it. Well, in that same area, it, it's it's amazing the, the progress that um, the board is making on the uh, on those buildings down there. I mean, the foundations are all in. He's already started in the back L shape building, and, and the progress is phenomenal. It really, really is very impressive. Very impressive to see that. So, I think the winter, obviously, the the, um, the mild winter we have aided in that. And I think you made the comment that it was amazing that none of the, maybe it was you or Jew made the comment that during the winter storm, none of those frames, none of the frames fell all over. Yeah. That should be the, the best advertisement. Right. Seriously. Solid yeah. building, yes. solid living oh here. Yeah. There's certainly a lot exposed there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see that. You know, okay. the, the, the timing of that in the North Avenue project. Um, pretty good. Pretty big deal for the <coughs> Thanks. And one more thing, too, just to follow up. Sorry. I did mention the windstorm and cleanup. That's continuing. We, we had a normal brush pickup last week, so we had that normal effort plus whatever people are putting out. We're still, next week, we're going to finish up and then go back. And anything that's not out, you know, we'll try to, try to work with, well, I guess uh, we're up tomorrow. So Monday morning, I'm going to put it on the website. I'll work with Joe and try to get it on the website. That that? This is the last week for the storm cleanup. Good. And then we'll they get Judson Street to email today? I think they, they've gone around about three times, and there's still, there's a pile um, out there now that's about as big as the picture behind you um, on Lincolnshire. But they've been around about three times, and I think it's natural. People see, see them going by, you know, they're getting outside. Right after it happened, we had a couple of feet of snow, mm -hmm. especially if they've got to get in the backyard or do something. It, there's so many of them are so wet, you know, the, uh, the the yards and everything are so wet, and if they're just drying out now, maybe we can just get something back there. Even a wheelbarrow sometimes will sink in and just tear things up, so they might be. Yeah, especially if you're not using the, uh, we're using the hard tire, hard tires in the wheelbarrows. Yeah, so I think that people are getting stuff out there, and the guys are, it's, some of those piles are something we've been using our back home. Sometimes we yeah. haul it, uh, but okay. Let's go on. Thanks. Yep. That's it. Really, for sure this time. Why? Thank you. So we still don't have. It's actually the, the controller for the mouse because the mouse stopped working. Out, the mouse stopped working. I thought it broke. <laughs> so, oh boy. Okay, your headache's getting to you. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs>
So are we gonna, are we going to uh, go into executive session tonight? I have nothing, um, if it was in regards to the union negotiations, yeah. I have nothing back yet. Um, well, we had the yeah. thing you emailed to everybody. Do you want to review that? I don't think there was there any TA. Oh, we, we certainly can. Um, That's what I thought this was for on here. Yeah, I think I left it out there in the early meeting. I don't know if everybody. I thought that's what we would talk about. Did you guys review that or no? Yeah. He sent it this week. The one sent this week. Oh, he sent it this week. Yeah. I did. Two hours. I don't remember. Two hours. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah. Which one? All right. Is that, is that a yes or a no? Yeah, we certainly could. I can get it to stop and get my notes. Oh. Well, are you prepared or no? We can wait till the next meeting. I did not time. review this. Well, then let's wait. Oh, is that my then let's wait. wait. Yeah, because I know yeah. we were waiting. We met with the. Because I was waiting to incorporate paycheck stuff in with what we already had, so I honestly forgot that I even sent this out. So we met with them. So yes. No. Motion and second to uh, close the meeting at this time. I'll second it. All right. Okay. All right. Trustee Bell Trustee Lansing. Trustee Ippolito. Aye. Mayor Cahill. Aye. Still Trustee Byers. Just say hi. I can't even tell you how many times I go home and my son's like, damn, you get those clips 